So problem eight says after the skier on the 37 degree hill has been moving for five seconds, the friction of the snow suddenly increases, an increase making the net force on the skier zero. What is the new coefficient of friction and how fast will the skier now be going after skiing for five seconds? So here's the slope. So this is what's given. So let's say this is 37 degrees. And here's our skier moving down the slope. And from the, the, uh, the example problem, we know that the, what was the velocity of the skier? Or actually you got that in, um, what was the velocity of the skier? What do you have on, your, on what's given over there at five seconds? Oh, they didn't give it to you at all? Okay. So, um, we know that here the acceleration is zero. And uh, because in, 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 these, in this uh, problem, it's, it's saying that um, uh, the net force is zero, so the acceleration is zero. And we want to find mu. What's the coefficient of friction? If the skier is going down this slope, 37 degrees, um, what must be the coefficient of friction if they don't have any acceleration? So let's solve it. So let me draw the skier as a dot. And the skier has mass. And therefore, wait. So there's going to be a normal force here. This is the slope pushing up on the skier. Well, at least perpendicular to the uh, the plane there. So this will be 37 degrees there. And then the weight here. Uh, oh, and then we have a force of friction that's parallel to the slope. But, you know, it's pushing up like that. And then oh, I see what you're saying. Uh, so now we need to establish an x direction. Let's say down the slope is x and perpendicular is y. So uh, the weight here gets broken up into its x and y components. This is mg cosine theta. If this gets rotated up 37 degrees, this gets rotated up 37 degrees like that. OK, and then this is mg sine theta, or sine 37 degrees. And then when I sum the forces in the x direction, it's going to be equal to 0 because there's no acceleration. And so I look at my free body diagram. I've got, OK, mg sine theta minus the force of friction equals 0. Now what this tells me is, is that the force of friction is equal to mg sine theta. Now, if I sum the forces in the y direction, equals 0. Well, in the y direction, there's only two forces. There's the normal force, and then minus mg cosine theta. And again, they have to add up equal to zero. So the normal force is equal to mg cosine theta. Now, the force of friction is equal to mu times the normal force. So if we want to find mu, we say mu is equal to the force of friction divided by the normal force. But here we said the force of friction is equal to mg sine theta 
the normal force is equal to mg cosine theta. So that the mass, uh, the weight of the skier cancels out. Sine over cosine is tangent. So this is just going to be equal to the tangent of the angle. And so the tangent of 37 degrees is equal to mu. And uh, the tangent of 37 degrees, uh, I believe you pu punch that into a calculator, and what do you get? 0.75. Now, the next question was, um, how fast would the skier now be going after uh, five seconds? And, oh, uh, they didn't give you the velocity, right? They didn't give you the initial velocity. So you don't really know what the number is, but what do you what do you know? You know the acceleration was zero. So what's true about the velo the final velocity of the skier is going to be the same. So the velocity is the same because there's no acceleration. So really that's that's your I think that's the answer to I don't think there is a part B, there's just a second question, right? And so um, the answer to that question is the velocity will be the same. Let's zoom out so everyone can see the whole thing. That's how you solve practice problem eight.